Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Toastmaster for Professionals. It's all about implementing your learnings in Toastmasters in your professional life and growing as a professional or as a person. Today we have a great theme and a great keynote speech by TTM Abhijit. It's about how to gain and keep visibility in your organization. As we don't have grammar in for today, I'm going to introduce the word of the day, which is growth, which means the process of increase in size. Growth, use it as widely as possible. Our Toastmaster for today is enthusiastic and past division <clears throat> director of District 101. Toastmaster Ashwin Patel. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming here. I'm in a remote location. So I kind of look kind of dark and it's like I'm in a haunted house, but bear with me. Today, folks, do you sometimes feel invisible in your job? It can all be too easy to slip into the background at work. And even when you do want to push yourself forward and might worry about tree, uh, trending on people's toes or looking arrogant. The rise of remote and hybrid working has further complicated visibility. While there are new exciting opportunities for collaboration, flexibility, and innovation, there are also concerns regarding communication and the possibility that people may fall through the cracks. So how can we increase your visibility at work in the most professional way possible? Well, you guys are going to be in a treat today because we have no other than the legend, the person that no, everyone knows their name when they come into a Toastmasters like meeting. Give it up for Abhijit, Abhijit Joshi. Thank you so much. <laughs> Raghu, can you spotlight me? Thank you, Raghu. It was 2015. I was hired by a company. The company at that moment was going through a recall. And my job was to make sure that there will not be any more recall in the future. So my visibility was sky high. Everyone in the company knew what I was doing. I was in heaven. But within one and a half year, our strategy changed. And we decided to get rid of the business I was in charge of. And suddenly, I became totally invisible. At that moment, I did not know what I need to do to gain visibility at work. But today I'm going to share that journey with you, which I took in last six years. Let's get it started. Here is the agenda for today. First, we'll talk about why. Why do we need to keep visibility at work? Then we'll talk about how to present effectively, how to be an effective team player, how to give an effective feedback, followed by secret to success. And then we'll do a summer. So my first question to you, Shahid, why do we need to keep visibility at work, Shahid? Yeah, the reason for that is to like, we do some of our work, so we should get recognized how we are doing and to grow further in our organization. We That's do need it. Thank you, Shahid. Mary, why do we need to keep visibility at work? We have certain skills and strengths. If we are not visible, 
no one's going to know about it. Very, very true. People need to know what we bring to the table. So today we are going to find out how we can do that. I was reading a blog one day and one statistic just caught my attention. They asked us one simple question. How many seconds does it take for people to make our first impressions? How many seconds does it take for people to make our first impressions? Bharat, any idea? How many seconds does it take for people? Okay, no worries. Three no worries. seconds, three seconds. Actually, it takes a little bit longer. It takes people seven seconds to make our first impressions. Now, the way we present ourselves, the way we carry ourselves, we can bolster that impression which we have made in seven seconds, or we can change that. So that is the power which we have in the way we present ourselves. And what things are effective in presenting ourselves? The first is active listening. Two and a half years ago, I was listening to the speaker, Sean. When he was talking about active listening, he said, when someone is talking, we need to follow them as they are talking. But what was happening to me, if someone is talking, and if suddenly I need to ask them a question, I'm starting to rephrasing that question in my mind, and the person is still talking and talking and talking, but I have missed what they have said in this interval because I was focused on paraphrasing that question. From that time, I realized I was listening to respond. I was not listening to understand. So I had to step back and learn the art of active listening. Because when I am able to do active listening, then it becomes easy for me to do the next stage. That is the critical thinking because there is so much of data thrown at me. I need to know what things are important, what things I need to talk about, and what things I need to let go of. So critical thinking is very, very important and it can only happen if we do active listening. If we listen to understand, then we can do the critical thinking. Now, once we got the time to do critical thinking and prioritize what things are important, the next stage is to organize the structure how do we share it with people so that they can easily understand it? That is the most important thing. You can use any kind of structure, but it has to be simple so that it can easily be understood. But there's one caveat. We don't want to share it with too much information or just ramble on one point that we lose our audience. We have to organize in such a way that it is brief to the point and conveys our message. As soon as rambling comes into picture, it is not very effective. I remember I was having a meeting in Europe. The meeting lasted for one and a half years. The meeting lasted for one and a half hours. And after that meeting, I was trying to write down the notes and I realized, oh my God, we're just rambling and rambling and rambling on just one topic. I didn't have much to write about. So finally, I realized we have to communicate in such a way that the person in front of us is able to understand. But always I remind myself that the reason I communicate is because I want to be heard. I want to be understood. 
and I want to be remembered. So these three things, I want to be heard, I want to be understood, and I want to be remembered. So when I keep these three things in mind and communicate in such a way that the person in front of me can absorb each and everything I am saying, at that moment, I've made a difference. I have literally communicated my intent. Any questions so far? So, so far we talked about how to present effectively. How to, the next thing we are going to talk about is how to be an effective team player. Okay. Few months ago, I was having a one-on-one -on -one session with my mentor and she asked me, what are the characteristics of being an effective team player? Effective team player? It caught me by surprise. I blurted out, relationship building? But at that moment, she asked me to be more specific. As I was drawing a blank, she shared the three nuggets that I, that stayed with me. The first thing she said, the three main characteristics are, number one is the drive. The drive to go beyond what is needed. For example, there is this one area director in our current team. He's going beyond than his job description. He has one struggling club in his area. He not only joined that club, he also got his wife to join that club. The way he communicates, the way he executes, stands up. One day the division director came to me and said, watch this guy, he's going to be a leader in the future. What sets him apart is the drive to go beyond what is needed. At my workplace, we have this new program manager join. But he, is always ready to help us whenever we need something. He's going beyond his job description. His help is so valuable for us that it makes our job easier. And we also want to give back, so we help him to make his job easier. So that drive of him to go beyond what is needed helps both of us. The second characteristic was humility. As soon as my mentor said humility, it reminded me of my CEO. Two years ago, he gave a speech in my club. And one thing he said that struck on my brain, he said, whenever he's speaking, he has genuine empathy for people so that they can understand each and every word he is trying to say. So they can understand each and every word he's trying to say. What he's practicing is the humility. Recently, a few months back, there was a contest going on. And there was a contest chair trying to explain how to use, how to run the contest to a judge, especially during judging. But the way the contest chair was explaining, her tone of voice was such that it did not show much humility. The judge came to me and said, no, I don't want to be a part of this. She felt that she was stupid. 
So one thing immediately I realized was the tone of voice. Our tone of voice is so important. So keep that in mind. Your tone of voice will show people if you are humble or not. And humility is very important so that you can create a connection with people. So far we talked about the drive, the humility to make a connection. And finally, the most important skill is being people smart. But people smart has three things in it. The first part being emotional intelligence. I need to understand where am I at that particular time? How are my emotions? Am I grounded? Or am I taken over by my emotions? Because if I'm taken over by my emotions, my lenses are clouded by my emotions. So whatever I'm observing, it's colored by my emotions. And when it's colored by my emotions, it's not the reality most of the times. So one thing I learned is just checking with myself. Am I centered or am I not? Because if I am centered, then I can observe what is going on. I was reading this book, Autobiography of a Yogi, and one sentence stood out for me. In that book, the one sentence was, observation, not judgment, is the highest form of human intelligence. Observation, not judgment, is the highest form of human intelligence. Now, when I know I'm centered, then I can watch what is happening in front of me. I can create that interpersonal awareness. I was having a meeting with my colleague and we were both debating. He wanted to do a build at the company he was working with. I wanted to do a build which I was comfortable with. So we both were kind of butting head against each other. But as we were discussing, I immediately realized that he was getting more defensive. His voice changed. At that moment, I checked with myself. For me, it didn't matter where the build happened, but it mattered that we get this project done. So I was able to comfort him immediately and say, oh, let's go with where you want to do the build. And that helped him to just open up. If I was attached to the outcome, maybe I would not have been able to caught that. So if we are emotionally grounded, then we can observe. We can observe and create our interpersonal awareness. But interpersonal awareness takes a lot of practice, a lot of experiential learning. Sometimes the work is not the right place because to have that learning experience and people give you feedback of what is happening. So you need a safe place where you can practice your building of interpersonal awareness. So, so far we talked about why and then we talked about how to present yourself how to be an effective team player. And now we'll talk about how to give an effective feedback. A few years ago, we are doing an evaluation workshop. And at that moment, my mentor introduced me a topic called as compassionate candor. Compassionate candor. It was based upon a book by Kim Scott. That time, she used to call it as radical candor. And he followed radical candor to give feedback to people. At that moment, that topic was very new for me. And I immediately realized that, hmm, this was going to be valuable because when I looked at the compass, the X and Y compass, you have X axis and you have a Y axis. On the top of the y-axis, you care personally about the person. 
and the bottom part, you don't care about the person. On one side, you stay silent. And on the other side, you give them a very challenging feedback. Now, when you look at this quadrant, Mary, which quadrant do you think you should give feedback to people? Did you call me? Yes, Mary, yeah. I'm too engrossed in your speech. Oh. Uh, which, yeah, lovely speech. Yeah. Um, which quadrant? I believe um, care personally, not with silence, but um, I'm not sure which is the first or the second quarter. I'm sorry. Yeah. Which is the first so, quadrant? So you can go with any quadrant, but tell me the other lines. So okay. care personally, that's good. Care personally and um, challenge directly. Yes. No, no, no. I, I'm not the challenging directly oh. type. I'm also not the silent type. So I guess it's the, no, I care too. Okay, I perhaps would go between care personally and silent to observe and, and see what's going on. <laughs> so the same thing happened to me when I read when uh, they started giving me this compass, I realized that I was doing ruinous empathy. I was like, I remember my friend was giving a speech. He was giving a level five speech. And at that moment, he was not prepared. And his speech did not meet the objectives. But I was too afraid to tell him. I stayed silent because I cared about him. And then I learned that I need to get away from this quadrant of ruinous empathy because this is the second worst quadrant to be in. This is the worst, but I don't see this in Toastmasters or in work so much. So I'm not going to talk about this, but I was in this quadrant. And then I came across this quadrant, obnoxious aggression where people give you very direct feedback. I remember at one of my one-on-ones with my boss in my previous, previous company, I got such a direct feedback that did not sit with me very well. So this, though, is the second best quadrant to be in. I became a little bit defensive. I did not accept it. And finally, the best quadrant to be in is in this quadrant, where you care personally, but at the same time, you give them a challenging feedback in an empathetic way so that they can receive it. And when they receive that feedback, you will see you will have a maximum amount of change in this quadrant. There is very little change or no change in this quadrant and this quadrant. Maybe a little bit here, but monumental change in this quadrant. And it takes practice to learn how to give feedback. For me, my practice ground was Toastmasters. I did like 100 plus evaluations trying to learn the art of giving a radical candor feedback. And then the same thing, I can apply it at work. One day my boss called me and he asked me, what do you think of the meeting? I immediately told him, like, boss, I felt the meeting was necessary, but we did not get much value out of it. At that moment, he liked it because I gave him direct or truthful answer with a compassionate way. So we want to keep those things in mind. It immediately sets you apart when you give a feedback in this quadrant. Now, as I said, everyone needs to find a place where they can practice the skills, the, the skill of active listening, organizing, 
critical thinking, how to be a team player, how to give feedback. So if you can find that place that can help you with your gaining visibility at work, it immediately sets you apart the way you carry yourself. But it takes time. It takes two to three years to develop these skills. So today I want to encourage you to find your place, your safe place, where you can practice, practice, practice and take these skills to the next level. Let's summarize. Always remember your why. Why do you need to gain visibility? Learn the art of effectively presenting, and it starts with active listening, critical thinking, organizing without rambling. I always keep it myself that I'm communicating because I want to be heard. I want to be understood and I want to be remembered. Be a team player because when you develop the skills, you have the drive, you have the humility and you have the people's smart skills. You stand out. Use the compassion a candor way to give feedback to people. Practice, practice, practice. It takes time. Before I go into the questions, I want to sh share that story with you. In 2019, I joined Toastmasters because one of my friends said, oh, it will change your life. Just because of her, I got into Toastmasters. And you know why I was there. But during those first three years, I got a chance to work on all these skills. And then suddenly, after three years, I got a chance to interview for a position, which I always wanted to be. I wanted to be a program manager. The position was open. And when I interviewed, all these skills were helpful for me. The interview was a breeze. And then when I got that role, I'm enjoying that role because I could apply my skills to the best of my ability. So these things help me in my workplace. Any questions? I can ask a question. Yeah, please, please. Thank you, Abhijit. As usual, you have been very, very clear. We heard you well. We will remember what you said. We understood also. I have just one question. I'm doing mm -hmm. a presentation next week. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be really helpful for me. Mm -hmm. And it is a 90 minutes presentation on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. Now, 90 minutes is too long a period yeah. for people. So, of course, I have structured it. I will start with what I'm going to say. And as you rightly said, we could see you. You pointed the points in the end. So we remember that you reinforced our belief. My question is, uh, this session was only 20 minutes or 15 minutes. I, I did not see the agenda. But in a 90 minute session, do you think it uh, I should be more engaging in terms of uh, fastest finger first, yes or no, some Mentimeter questions asking, like just now you said, to communicate, you need to be heard, understood, and remembered. So can I, I mean, would it be making sense when I ask on Mentimeter, what do you think is communication? And let people throw their ideas there so that they are involved. And uh, because some people say it may not be a professional way to get people engaged like that. And I'm talking to professionals there. Back to you. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you for your question. Your question is you are giving a 90 minute presentation and how do you want to keep your audience engaged for 90 minutes? Yes. yes. One thing I've learned from various <laughs> presenters is they change things after 20 minutes. You want to change, you want to get the audience do something. 
So I like that idea of using Mentimeter after 18 to 20 minutes. So you are giving them to do something that changes their frame. And that is very helpful. You can ask them questions. I like to engage my audience with more questions, but it depends upon the time. The more you get your audience engaged, the better your presentation goes. Because, and also you can ride that wave. Once you get the audience involved, you can feel the energy of the audience and then you can write that. Paper. Thank you so much. Sure. I was a little confused. Should I, should not. My gut feeling said yes, but my mentor said no. So I got a little confused there. You want to get the audience involved. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So DTM much. Richa has had a question. Richa. Hi, good morning. Well, Hi. You, as always, Abhijit, you, your speech, your script, the things that you have uh, expressed today and shared with us, they were very much informative and interesting. I just have one question for you. Can you just give us three or four tips how to uh, structure our script or speech to make it more engaging and effective? What are the tips that you would like to tell us? So you're talking about how to make your speech or script more engaging for audience. Is that correct? That's right. And how long is the speech? It is two hours. Two hours. Okay. So one thing I'm learning is storytelling is leadership. If you have a two hour speech, you need to have lots of stories. Because those stories will help you to take your message forward. Just having a very plain presentation doesn't help. You want to have those stories which are ups and downs. And that stories, those stories make your things interesting. So that people stay with you, not because of the content, but because of the stories and how you are sharing that content through your stories. So the more stories you have, the better it's going to stick with the audience. Absolutely. Thank you. And please, please do uh, make it a, a frequent thing. We would like to hear you again and again. Thank you. Thank you, Richa. Any Vikram, yes. Vikram had a question. Hi, Vijit. Hi. As, as usual, the morning uh, breakfast for me with the uh, uh, beautiful learning. See, one, one quick question or uh, a suggestion that I would like to have. It. So when you say that four quadrants, right? So identify, <clears throat> do you have any tips? Because I see like, sometimes I have it in uh, care personally with the silence or sometimes I'm silence, don't care, so I'll become a silent person. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, for example, if there is an accident that happens in a road, there are mm -hmm. already a few number of people. So I may say, I may be silent and say, okay, I don't care because already there are so many people there. So there are instances that I will be fitting in, in all these quadrants in once in a while. But how do you suggest to choose or how do you suggest to focus on a particular quadrant which will help us to be a, a better person or a better leader? Yes. So what happens is like, for example, at workplace, I'm working with my colleague and I want us to improve not just each other, but as a company. We, wa we want to be proud of our, we want to be proud of what we do. So for that, I need to help him or he needs to help me when we are not doing some things precisely. So at that moment, if we can give ourselves feedback in such a way that we can receive it and apply it and make a difference, that will be very helpful. So always look into, see, at workplace, giving feedback is so helpful because I've been in places at work. Sometimes they don't give you feedback and you don't know where you stand. And people want to know where they stand, what they are doing, what are things they are doing effectively, what things they can do to make it more effective. So at workplace, sometimes it's very helpful. Like, especially if you care about someone on your team, then share that feedback with them. But if someone is, not on your team and someone is not very close to you, then it takes time. You need to have that relationship with them to give that feedback. 
does that answer to your question, Vikram? Yeah, thanks, thanks. Mary. Mary. Uh, thank you for your speech. Um, you have a very calm and soothing voice, which is very unusual among presenters these days. And I personally have Zoom fatigue listening to rambling presenters or those who are overexcited on the screen and I just shut down. I want to know, how did you get to this? Are you naturally like this? I hope it's not a personal question. Yeah, sure. Are you naturally like this or is it because you do a lot of meditation? Are you, you calm? I really like that soothing. I'm not feeling well. But just listening to you, I'm like alert already. I mean, that's magic. Your aura is your aura is so good for someone who's giving a presentation that is actually working in our brain, you know? Wow, that's really good. I just want to know, because I want to do that too. Yeah. yeah. Please share with us if it's yeah. not personal. Definitely not. Definitely I'll share with you. You know, when I joined Toastmasters, one of the things in my bucket list was I wanted to teach people how to do yoga. But at that moment, I was not very comfortable. But in 2021, what happened was my company, they stopped the yoga classes. And there was this, my colleague of mine, she said, hey, I would like to do yoga with you. I said, okay, I'll teach. It's time for me to start my own practice. And from May of 2021, I started teaching yoga. And that was very helpful for me. I think because when I'm doing yoga, my eyes are closed and things are just coming in my brain. And that's what now I'm applying in my speaking. Actually, today's presentation is not rehearsed or planned or anything. Everything is happening because I can center myself at that moment. And then I can just speak what's come to my mind at that moment. So, yeah. And also, I've practiced a lot. I've spoken over 400 times in the last three years. So, yeah. Like, yeah. So, so the practice and everything helps. And it was a lot of process, a lot of hard work, because initially I used to like cringe onto the script, hold it onto my dear life. But then one of my friends said, let go of the script because it's not you. There was a lot of fear. But finally, just um, I joined this one club where they encouraged us to give one speech a month. And since May of 2020, I've given at least one speech a month. So new content, new. So that was helpful. Thank you. That's over the top of our. Yes. Thanks, Abhijit, for that wonderful session and everyone for their questions. You can send the rest of questions to us or email. I'm going to share my email and then I'll pass it on to Abhijit. Okay, now it's time to go for our table topic session. Our table topics today is by Toastmaster Sayashri. Sayashri, the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Toastmaster. Raghu Raj. And good morning to everybody, those who are present here. You all are able to see such a beautiful background. Yes. Yes. I'm audible? Yes. Okay. Right. Good. So you might be as thinking that why I kept this background today. We are not in a any uh, grassland. We are not uh, outside, but yes. My table topics are going to be related to this habitat where we will find some colorful butterfly, birds, snail, everything. You have to choose them. Okay. For your understanding, let me tell you what is table topic. Table topics enable a member to develop the skill of impromptu speaking. Table topic help train members to quickly organize, express their thoughts. You can think of table topic speech as a mini speech with an opening and the body and the conclusive. 
and this also provides speaking opportunity for any member who is not on any duty during the agenda or there is those who are not a role player and guests may be able to take part here they tell you what is the timing for the speakers that is 1 to 2 minute for each participant those who are coming on the screen so speak on any topic given by the table topic master hopefully you all are able to see timer screen yes okay and how i'm going to choose my table topic speaker that is quite simple right you all are ready for the game right you have to clap when i am saying click you have to clap when i am saying click and you have to click when i am saying clap ready all the speakers are ready all the members are ready yes very good click yeah very good there is a dtm g bharat you are ready Okay. For guest. Oh wow! Very good. No worries. First, we will take uh, with the very first who has uh, given the answer, who has done that activity. Let me change my background and come to the normal so that you can see all the objects which I have. You have to choose any one of this: a snail, small caterpillar, pupa. We are having a big butter caterpillar and the colorful butterfly. Choose any one. Butterfly. Oh my God! The first butterfly. Great, great, great. And your topic is which? Oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> White water rafting, hiking, or skiing. White water rafting, hiking or skiing? Hiking or skiing? Yes. Okay. Can you repeat, please? White water rafting, hiking or skiing? Good morning from Hong Kong. Chinese New Year, the Lunar New Year, celebrations all around. Three days holidays. Everyone is hiking or canoeing all outside. Yamcha, meeting friends and family. I went to my favorite spot last two days and that is BBQ. There is a place called Thai Mai Tuk, which has eight mountains and the sea is surrounded by these eight small mountains. It is so beautiful. The breeze, oh, we were all decked up. It was very chilly and we could, the breeze could go inside deep us. So we were all decked up. Inside warm, outside is cold. I was at this, after the walk on the big plover dam, we sat down for our BBQ pits right next door. And then I was remembering our district event where we went canoeing. And I was trying to compare and in our BBQ, we were just chit chatting. And then I remembered, Oh, I got married. I went to Ladakh and there was white water rafting there. Thinking about all these good memories in my holiday with my close family and friends, I could just make one thing out of it. Bharat, you are a person who loves nature. Throw anything at me, a new challenge, a hike, white water rafting or 
for that matter, skiing. I have not done skiing in my life, so that is my next target. I believe, be in nature, that is the best for us. All others are just tools to be there. Back to you, Table Topic Master. Thank you so much, DTM Bharat, for a wonderful take on the topic. Next, you all are ready for the next activity. I just want everyone to switch on their camera. And you have question is same to select the speaker. Clap while I'm saying the click. You have to click your finger when I'm saying the clap. Okay, ready? Click. Click. Yes, Toastmaster Amruta Avinash. Yes. Yes. I'm audible. Yes, ma'am. Butterfly, butterfly went to another flower to take the nectar, to suck the nectar. I'm having only a snail, a pupa, small butterfly, this baby, born baby. And the big caterpillar who is feeding on a leaf. Um, I think I'll go with the small caterpillar. Baby caterpillar? <clears throat> wow. Yes, Very good. baby caterpillar. Mm, so your topic is the first three things you do in the morning. First three things you do in the morning. Toastmaster Amrita. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone from India. Um, it's wonderful to join this meeting. Uh, so my topic is three things that I do every morning. Um, uh, so the moment I wake up, so I heard this um, small reel of um, a person who was talking about what he does the first thing in the morning. He's a very famous person. He's the host of the show. I don't quite remember his name right now. I can't recall it. But um, the take that I got from that, what I took from that video was, he said that each morning that he wakes up, uh, the moment he opens his eyes, the first five to 10 minutes, he sits and he does this gratitude meditation. That is, he sits and he says all the things that he is thankful for uh, in his life. So... And that, and he said that that has been a very huge, that has brought a huge impact, positive impact in his life. Um, so I started doing that for the past two, three months now to say at least one thing that I'm grateful for the moment I wake up. And then I think I drink a glass of water and uh, brush my teeth. That could be my second and third thing that I do. <laughs> That's too literal, but yeah, that's all I could think of. Thanks. Thank you so much. Over to you, Toastmaster. Table Topic Master of the Day. Yeah. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Amrita, for a wonderful take on three things which you do in the morning. Second, again, ready? Question is same. Click while I'm, uh, when I'm saying clap. Clap while, uh, when I'm saying click. Uh, this will be ready? the last topic, just for information. Yes. yes. So yeah. Yes, right, right. I remember. <clears throat> Clap. Yes. Toastmaster Shahid. Toastmaster Shahid. Now I am having only three. A big caterpillar pillar, a snail, and a pupa. I'll go with a snail. You want to go with a snail? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Topic for you is slow and steady win the race. Slow and steady win the race. Toastmaster Shahid. I remember it was the last day of my college and I signed up for a, for an, for a preparation of examination from a 
from one of our lecturer like he suggested me to go to a place the examination was for the gmat i have to prepare for gmat and this sir suggested me to go to a place there i went and i was just looking at the number of hours it takes to complete the whole gmat preparation it was around 300 hours and then i was really in a hurry to just finish everything in uh, like in a uh, in one and a half or two months just stretch it out like study for so long and then do it i did that for a month but i was not improving then i went to the instructor instructor and asked why am i not improving in this after having a conversation for four to five minutes he said he came to a conclusion that i was really running very fast i was in a hurry to complete the course he said this is not how it's going to work you'll have to give time to each and every question be slow be steady and don't run just go with the pace and go slowly and you will win the race if you go slowly let it take 3 to 4 months if it's taking and now i am in that journey i am preparing for the exam going very slow that's what from my side over to you thank you so much toastmaster shahid for wonderful thoughts about the topic to conclude my session i want to say you only one thing our life is like a butterfly which is start from the pupa we eat some good things in the in terms of gaining knowledge and turn into caterpillar we jo join any organization again we develop something we uh, develop the skills we learn how to manage or uh, to manage things manage the skills leadership skills many things that all are colorful wings for us after some time you will feel that you are actually the successful professional butterfly with many beautiful colors in your wings over to you toastmaster raghunandan wonderful i really loved your session today toastmaster mm -hmm. sai shri and especially the conclusion i think it's all about turning yourself or rather developing each step by step and then growing to become the big butterfly one day maybe in your professional life maybe in your personal life it's all about growing and becoming better now it's time to know how we can become better and we have our evaluation section dtm cynthia distinguished host master cynthia is going to evaluate distinguished abhijit space today cynthia the stage is yours thank you so much fellow toastmasters and honored guest and especially dtm abhijit wow what a message you had that was the message was spectacular but your delivery was really that was the 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 cherry on top and you you exuded that energy of compassion and humility and you emulated for us what we should we should do in our presentations so you did what cicero was as is known as the the greatest orator of all time and he said that you have to emulate your emotions for your audience so they follow you i loved how you opened your your presentation with a story and story is leadership absolutely absolutely and you led us with a story and then you gave us a road map for where we're going and you had your in your conclusion you had a summary for where we had been and even during the middle of it you you went back over what we've covered so far especially because it was a longer presentation it's not 7 minutes it's 20 minutes or so and my biggest takeaway was compassionate candor and you really exuded that you exemplified it you didn't just tell us about it you really showed us how to do it 
Yeah. And I don't see my timer. <laughs> so can Susan you raise your doing, hand? Susan yeah. is doing that. Okay. Can you raise your hand electronically, please? So I see you in the front. Yeah. So, um, oh, there you are. Um, so I really loved your engagement with the audience. I loved your visual aids and they weren't flooding us with texts. It was, it was pictures a la Steve Jobs. <laughs> you did a fabulous job of emulating him. And I liked how you, you showed us that you are a yogi and like a, a true yogi, you had us coming to you rather than you pushing yourself to us. And we would come to you and we wanted more. We just wanted more. The thing I would have liked more of, I love the audience engagement, but I thought if we had been prepared, like especially Mary, if she had been prepared to ask her questions, she wouldn't have been so surprised and um, caught off guard. So letting the audience know, now I'm going to ask you some questions and see if you're retaining the information. So it was absolutely amazing. And I thought you showed us how to be at work and how to, to gain that visibility at work by what you did. Thank you so much. Thank you for that wonderful feedback, DTM. Cynthia, now it's time to see how we are doing on meeting. Let me invite the senior store Masha Susan for her timer report. Today, everyone was in time. Abhijit, your keynote speech, you gave me cues from 25 to 35 minutes, and you ended at 35 minutes and 10 seconds. Excellent wrap up. On the table topics, the required time is one to two minutes, though we do allow a 30 second leeway on either side of that time frame. Bharat, you spoke for two minutes and 22 seconds. Amruta, one minute and 30 seconds. Shahid, one minute and 54 seconds. On the evaluator, the required time is between two to three minutes with that 30 second leeway as well. And Cynthia spoke for three minutes and 20 seconds. Everyone was within time today. Well done. Thank you very much, DTM Susan. Pushmasha Helen, can you please provide the Arconda report? Yes, the Arconda report. Abhijit, you had one false start that I, and then you changed it to that stayed with me. And there was a grammatical error when you said that drive of him. So you might wanna revisit that sentence. Uh, Cynthia, in your evaluation, four ands, one ya, yeah, three so's and two ums. Uh, Shahid, in your table topics response, one um, two ahs, two likes, two ands. Uh, let's see, uh, Bahat, in your table topics response, one a. Uh. Amruta, in your table topics response, one okay, five ums, three uhs, two ands, two sos. That concludes my report. Thank you very much, Tosh, Masha, Helen. So that's it in the meeting for you. But are you committed to your learning, to your growth? Those master professional is here for you. Please join the meeting for the and also the club. The club is in chartering process. We have certain number of people who are interested already. If you want to grow your professional career using this wonderful platform, we are here for you. Our posted feedback form, please take one minute fill it i agenda meeting officially now and we can have chit chat after this <laughs> 